age. More on that, uh, more than 200 children believed to have been kept away from Anderton Park Primary School in Moseley today. Comes after days of protests from Muslim parents and community members campaigning against children learning about gay relationships. Joining us now to discuss this is Imam Ajmal Mazrur. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us on the programme this afternoon. What do you think? Hi. I think it's parents' right. I'm a parent myself. And of course, as parent, I have all the responsibilities of uh, from birth until they have become adult to look after them for their education, for their spiritual well-being, emotional well-being, for their safety. And this is a choice of the parents. And when the environment becomes toxic with extreme ideas, with almost, in, uh, what do you call, entrenched views, and nobody is willing to even give an inch. That's when what we see is happening in Birmingham bega begins to happen everywhere else. But it's, it's up to the school, it's up to the state to decide on the curriculum for a school. It's not up to the parents. It is up to the parents to make sure that their children are getting a wholesome education. So in the cases of Muslims, Muslims have a very strong religious background and affinity to their faith. And if their faith has specific instructions that they have to follow, a state or any individual cannot demand 1.8 billion Muslims of the world to abandon their faith. That's a big ask. But this is not a faith school. It's a state school. I understand. You cannot disconnect a human being from their faith and their beliefs. Just like the LGBT community, they have a faith and a belief. Whether it is based on religion or no religion, it makes no difference. It's based on conviction. It's based on their understanding of what is right. And I'm afraid when it comes to two people's rights, we have to respect both. We have to respect that Muslim communities have the right or faith communities have the right to say that this is my faith principle and LGBT communities have their right to believe as well as preach their own principles. What we need to do is create a safe space for both communities to interact, both communities to talk, instead of this entrenched militancy that we see growing in our country. And this is not becoming safe for me or anybody else. But there's a difference between faith and principle, isn't there? No. Some of us, Muslims as well as Christians and the Jewish people, and people of Sikh, Hindu and other religions, do derive their life principle from their faith. And we cannot disconnect the two. Don't. I think. But others I don't, know, with but some, respect. Some do, some do, and with respect, of course. And that is the issue. Tolerance is a two-way process. When we say multi-faith, multicultural, we talk about a free market of various thoughts and ideas. And in such a free market of thoughts and ideas, we can't suppress one over the other. While LGBT community have their rights, and that is that they should be respected and honoured for their lifestyle, Muslim communities should equally be respected for their choice. And if that is not given, of course, parents would react. And I don't think anybody wants to see any reaction. What we want to do is create a space where we can be brothers and sisters in humanity rather than trample over each other. We need to offer dignity and honour to everybody. Just because I'm a Muslim, it does not give me the right to take away a person's humanity and dignity. It is part of my faith to treat the other with honour and dignity and expect that in return. So as Muslims, I think the Muslim parents are demanding that they have the right to tell the state and the school, as well as everybody else, Please respect our choice. And that is, we as parents would not like to teach our children at such an age such material or issues because we are seeing them to be over-sexualising and the consequences of over-sexualised society is what we live in right now. Well, that's a conversation for another day, I suppose. But as far as young, young Muslims are concerned, what if they decide that they are gay or curious? They're not going to find out what to do to keep themselves safe uh, at home, given what you said. So surely the best place to do that then is at school. Well, you know, my, I've got two kids. One is 10 and the other is 13. And I've spoken to them about sex and sexuality and I've talked to them about relationship. When I taught them about sex and sexuality, I did not begin by discussing sex and sexuality as a physical act on its own. I talked to them about sexual ethics. I talked about morals. I talked about love relationship. We as a parent, mother and a father in that relationship, exemplify what we call a safe space of love and protection for children. So when we teach our children sex, from an Islamic perspective, we bring sexual ethics in it. And that is, according to Islam, and Muslims, those who subscribe to Islam, is that you cannot have sex outside marriage. And marriage is only acceptable between man and a woman. Many people may, may have many inclinations in life. 
Unfortunately, in Islam, you can only have sex in a marital relationship. And that's how we teach our children how to be tolerant, how to be inclusive, and also be ha how to be responsible with their relationship, with their love, and their very basic desire in life. But these children um, are not being uh, taught uh, how to be tolerant or how to be uh, inclusive. They're being taught that it's unacceptable to be gay. I think they're being taught from an early age that sexuality and sex should not be thrust on your face and you should not be robbed of your innocence so early. I think that's what the Muslim community is saying, that we don't want our children to be exposed to these complex issues. If you ask many adults, even they don't understand it. So I would like to request everybody, Muslims and those who don't have um, a faith or other faiths for that matter, one simple request, and that is every child has the right to live in a space that is safe and secure, and they should not be robbed of their innocence. We call it fitra in Islam, which is their natural disposition. Sex and sexuality doesn't play a role until puberty in their life. Why thrust it on their face? Remember, in Islam, according to the Muslim faith and belief, the sex and sexuality of a person is a very private matter. It should not be written on my forehead, walking around demanding that I should be recognized for my sexuality. I should be respected, of course. I should be given honor and dignity equally, just like everybody else. But my children and children of the world should be protected from being exposed to over-sexualized environment and losing their innocence too early. And what about the other children in class at this school who uh, see these protests outside and think, oh, I don't quite understand what all of that is about? I mean, surely that yes. they have a right as well. I agree, and I've been thinking that myself. So I would have asked for the LGBT communities and Muslim communities to sit together, not just in Birmingham, but across the country, and come up with where we agree, how we can coexist, how we can create a space of love and affection based on our bro common human brotherhood, rather than our differences. I need to tolerate and accept the differences, and I would like that in return. And that's precisely what's missing in this conversation at the moment. If somebody speaks about sexuality freely and openly, Many people are afraid of being called all sorts of labels. Believe me, Kate, I received an email yesterday from somebody from the LGBT community calling me all sorts of names for being open, for being frank, and for being bold and brave in what I'm saying. I'm saying with respect to my friends and those who have LGBT lifestyle, I respect you utterly and completely. But please respect my right to also hold my view and teach my children that view and teach my children that most human beings, regardless of their faith, their gender, their nationality, race or colour, they're human beings and they're one brotherhood and sisterhood. OK, here, here. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Iman. Thank you. Thank you.